Good morning and happy Friday. Yes, it's prayer time Friday. I'm telling you, prayer time for the believer should be every day. It should be every day, multiple times of day. But today it's prayer time Friday where I share with you how to pray. We're in the how to pray series and I'm excited. I'm learning and I hope you are too. So let's get into it because we are back into the series. We took a pause over the holidays, but even though we still had prayer time and it's in line with what I'm teaching because we are practicing what I'm sharing. So now we're back to the series. Now, it's prayer time Friday. Remember, I always say this and I'll continue to say it. Prayer time is not a monologue. So don't get before God and just talk and yap, 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 yap. Leave him a list, a laundry list, and then you run off into the sunset. You have to, what, wait to listen. Prayer is a dialogue. So you should let God speak. And in these time, as I, over the years, I learned to do more listening because sometimes I'm talking and I'm talking and then I just like, oh, and I get upset or whatever. But you know, when I start listening to God, he's got a lot to say. He does. So do more listening. I used to do this. I would pray because yes, you know, we had, we were intercessors. And so as intercessors, we get prayer requests all the time. People were sick. We had to go to the hospital and pray for people. And it's a lot. And so we had to be prayed up and studied up. Right. And on my lunchtime, I would, oh, <laughs> and don't take this the wrong way, but I would always find, cause there's Catholic churches everywhere. And I would always try to find a Catholic church and I would find this wonderful particular church and I would go and I would go in and find me a little island because they have the little um, built in uh, pillows on the seat and I would pull them down and just kneel down and pray. And one thing I like about the Catholic church, when you go in, it's so reverent and quiet. You hear the organ in the back, they're playing and stuff. And I would go in and worship and listen to the Lord. Sometimes I would go on my lunchtime and I will find a particular spot. And I would try to go to the same spot every day. That's, you don't have to do that. But I would go to this particular spot where it was quiet and I wasn't going to be interrupted by people talking and doing all kinds of stuff. And I would just sit quietly would read the word and would meditate and would sit quietly. And I'm telling you, the Lord will begin to inspire you in your heart. He'll begin to, you know, um, what you call it? Answer some things. He will begin to give you understanding. He will enlighten you. You'll be illuminated. And again, I always say, don't think it's you because you're not that smart. I, I never thought it was me because I'm like, I'm not that smart. I didn't think of that. And you know you didn't think of that. Come on. So prayer is a dialogue. It's not a monologue. So don't just, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the things, and I was talking to the Lord, and I've been talking to the Lord about it, and I may back off of it a little bit, is that some churches, when they come out to pray, they just like yell, oh, God in heaven, oh, God, do this. And they go on, and they're so loud. Now, I'm not saying loud because I can be loud. I'm, I'm naturally loud when I get excited, right? And you can be loud if you're loud. But it's not the loudness, but it's the delivery. Oh, God, you can't hear nothing through that. My sheep hears my voice. So if that's how you pray and you're loud automatically, there's a difference because, my, you know, um, I could be talking to my friend. Like sometimes you go out and we're at the table and we're talking and then somebody said, God, you're loud, girl, you're loud. Like that. That's what I mean when I say some people, they pray and, you know, ah, you can't hear, you know, so you, you, you kind of have to find your, your balance. You have to find your center. Okay. And sometimes I go to these churches and there does on and on. Uh, uh, and you're like, okay, can you, can you hear what he's saying? Because what I do, and I'll share this with you. When you go to pray, ask him, what should I pray? Lord, what, what do you, you know, the Holy spirit will teach you. 
Sometimes he'll wake me up and he'll tell me to pray for this and pray. And, you know, and again, I don't want to scare people because they think that God is going to come into the room and some angel's going to flap his wing and come in and you're going to be scared. No, you just, you just have this thing on in your spirit and he'll wake you up to pray. And sometimes you, he doesn't tell you fully, but then after you pray the next day or the next week, you realize, oh my God, you were praying for something that was going to drop next week. And he was preparing you and he was making a way for you. So prayer is important, but more so you've got to listen because the Bible said the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you into the truth. The truth is what we're looking for in our circumstances so that we can walk in the truth, so that we can what do the right thing, make the right decision, so that we can live prosperous lives, right? So prayer includes praise, and the theme on this prayer is praise. And what is praise? So let's get into it, because you might say, how can prayer have all these things? It's not that it has all these things that you got to memorize and do them one after the other. It's just a part of prayer. Sometimes you may get up to pray and you have a request, but then the Holy Spirit will instruct you to praise, to worship, to give thanks. He may instruct you and he said, and in your spirit, you just, and, and, and this is what it's like. You, you just feel like saying, thank you, Jesus. You know, you have a little list, right? You got your list and all you can say is thank you, Jesus. And suddenly you're overtaken and you just find yourself saying, Lord, I thank you. And you're thanking him for everything but the kitchen sink. Because there's a reason. And as you grow in the Lord, you begin to understand the way of the spirit. The law of the spirit in Christ Jesus. There is a way of the spirit. Those who are sons of God, they are led by the spirit of God in the book of Romans. And that's one of the things my church, Redeeming Love, Pastor Clinton and Pastor Sarah, Pastor Sarah, actually, she, the Lord gave this to her. She, she taught us a whole series on being led by the spirit of the Lord. If you're not led, you're going to get into trouble. You've got to be led by the spirit. And so prayer, when you go to pray, you have to be, sometimes you, you're going to be led by the spirit of the Lord. Because there are things that maybe he wants you to do. There's instructions you need to follow. And so remember, prayer is a dialogue, not a monologue. Don't just drop your list off and run into the sunset. Stop doing that. Wait for him. Wait for him. How could you walk out your house and you haven't heard his voice? Oh, my goodness. Come on, church people. So praise is giving somebody recognition, you know, acknowledging someone's character or work. But when you praise God, you are declaring and you're praising who God is. So when it comes to praise and God, it's different because now we praise him for who he is. And you, you know, well, pray, it doesn't say that in the Bible. No, but it's who God is. And praise is is attached to who he is. And so it says, you know, praise, when you praise God, you praise him for who he is. It honors God. Praise is to honor God, right? It's because again, of who God is. He's God. He made the world, right? He made you. He made, he made us all. So praise is glorifying God, right? His attributions of perfection, because God is perfect. Oh, why, why would you not praise God? Oh my goodness. And so praise again is giving adoration and, and, and thanksgiving. I mean, it's just so much because of who God is. All right. And again, remember, I'm giving you a little bit so that you can go and you can research this on your own and dig a little deeper. But again, as human beings, we like praise too. On your job, you get praise for things that you do. You know, pe people like it. People look for reasons to boast, you know, and to show their trophies. And I got 10 this, I got this. And especially those... Um, uh, celebrity people or whatever actor actresses oh I got an Oscar or a Grammy award and I got this I got that so praise 
is also a response of worship. And we're going to talk about worship next. But I wanted to talk about praise a little bit. And then we'll bring in worship because they're all and they're all and they're not separate. They're not separated. I'm just breaking it down for you so that you know what prayer in, entails and what prayer is so that when you go to pray and you have these experiences, you know what it is. You see what I'm saying? So don't sit there and go, oh, I got to praise. I got to worship. No, it's going to be automatic when you when you sit and you wait on the spirit of the Lord and you're going to see it. It, it all happens within the same second. But I'm breaking it apart so you understand what's happening when you praise. Now, I'm going to go into Second Chronicles because that's a big one. But I want to read a few scriptures. Again, I'm gonna I'm trying to keep it simple because the time is so short. But um you have to again go study prayer, study praise, study it all out, and you will see. I want to start in Psalm 34. So we're going to read and then we're going to talk about it like we always do. So Psalm 34, I like what the psalmist is saying. And the psalmist says this, and this is a psalm of David. He said, I will bless the Lord at all times. Listen, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. So when you're talking to God, it's prayer because prayer is a dialogue, right? And so in his talking to God, he says, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord and the humble will hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name. So he's honoring God for who he is. You see that? He said, let's magnify his name together. He says his praise will continually. And that's why I say to you, when you go before God, listen. Don't just walk away because the Holy Spirit might tell you to praise God. He might tell you, get into praise and you're going to see why I'm going to, I'm, 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 let me get through these scriptures so we can get to the, the big meat of it because I want to get it in a, a timely fashion because I'm so excited because you're going to see praise is powerful. And anytime you're praising God, he in, inhabits the praises. He, he, God comes into the praise. He's present when you praise. There's power in praise. And that's why people, you know, you always hear in the church, oh, your praise is a weapon. Praise is powerful. And if you would learn to praise him more than you talk, more than you, you, you put a request before him, you will see by the time you get to through praising God, whatever it is you're waiting for, it's already waiting for you. Psalm 150. Oh, I'm preaching. You see that? This is why I try to read and be quiet. But Psalm 150 is another popular one. Go back and read these. And it says, praise God in his sanctuary. Hey, you see that? Praise him in his mighty firm, in the in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Reasons to praise God. Praise is a part of prayer. Praise is what the believer should do. David says, "It I will bless the Lord. And his praise will continually, continually be in my mouth. So we should never get into prayer without praise. You see that? He says, praise him with the sound of the trumpet, praise him with the flute, praise him with the timbrel and dance, praise him with the string in instrument. So you can praise God in different ways. You can sing, you can dance, you can play an instrument, you can sit and beat your pot covers. I love to cook. I, I'm, I mean, check me on a Saturday. I'm cooking, baking, cooking. Right? And sometimes I'm in the kitchen and I'll have the wooden spoon and I'm praising the Lord and listen to the music. I'll find something to bang with it. Right? You praise God. And it says, praise him with the symbol, praise him with the clashing symbol. But look what, what he says in verse six. Let everything, let everything that has breath 
praise the Lord. If you have breath, you ought to be praising God. And praising God is a part of prayer. It's included. He says, I will bless the Lord. His praise, his praise, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Praise him with the dance. Praise him singing. Praise him whatever it is. Run around the block and praise God. But let everything that has breath, praise ye the Lord. Why? For who he is. Praise him for his greatness. Praise him for his mighty acts. You're praising him for who he is. Now, people talk about praise as a weapon. And remember, um, I, I didn't go to it, but he indwells the praise. He comes and he sits up in it. And one thing the Holy Ghost teaches me, and it's in the Bible too, wherever God shows up, he never leaves him. He never leaves that place without depositing something. God is not like man. When he comes, he comes to do something. So when he comes and he indwells your praise, he's going to leave something with you. He's going to pour something with you. Oh, you're going to get something. That's who he is. He indwells. <clears throat> he comes in. And anywhere where God is, oh my God, you're going to be blessed. You're going to be touched. You're going to be changed. Because that's who he is. He's like a father. In 2 Chronicles 20, and I'm not going to go into the hermeneutics and all this stuff, and it's too much because the time is short. Study it, study it for yourself. We're talking about praise. And we meet this wonderful king named Jehoshaphat. And in chapter 17, I want to introduce you a little bit so that you, to, to establish something. And in verse 10, 17, we're going to go back to chapter 20, but I'm just going to introduce you a little bit to Jehoshaphat so you, uh, to bring a point across. And it says, and the fear of the Lord fell on all the kingdom of the land that were around Judah. He was the king, right? So they did not make war with Jehoshaphat. Also, some of the Philistine brought Jehoshaphat, listen, presents of silver as a tribute. And the Arabians, they brought him flocks, 7,000, I mean, 7,000 rams, 7,000 male goats. And Jehoshaphat became increasingly powerful and he built fortresses and storehouses in the city of Judah. So he was the king. He had great influence. He was multiplying. He was spreading. He was powerful. And he was wealthy. And all the nations, they didn't touch him because they knew that God was with him. So as usual, when someone starts to prosper and God is blessing them, here come the haters, the liars, the one who like to gossip. And so these other nations, they all join forces and got together and decided they wanted to go whoop Jehoshaphat. They wanted to take over because he was getting too big. And so the word came to Jehoshaphat saying, a great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea, from Syria. And they are in Hazan of Tamar, which is the En Gedi. And Jehoshaphat feared. He feared. And then he set himself to seek the Lord. Listen. So I started in chapter 17 to let you see that sometimes you're serving God and you're doing the right thing and God has blessed you and you're flourishing and you're doing it. But the enemies of God will come for you. Sometimes we think it's because you're cute and you're this and you're that, but the enemies of God will come for you because trust me, when you're a believer and you're a true believer, you're not going to go for another believer. You're not going to tear them down. And even if they're wrong as wrong can be, you're not going to tear them down. You'll just give them the word and go on about your business. But you see, they're haters and they're planted specifically. So you can tell a true Christian, a true believer, because they're not tearing you down and ripping you apart. But my point is, you can be living right and trouble finds you. That's just the way of life. He's the king, mind you. And so he, he became afraid. But watch what he did. He set himself to seek the Lord and he proclaimed a fast. This is the king. 
And many times believers, when trouble comes and I'll say it and don't you judge me now, you know, you, you want to call the pastor. One time I had to tell somebody, listen, we, this prayer list is getting too long. People don't want to pray. They don't know the word. They don't spend time with God. They don't pray. They don't praise. They don't worship. And when trouble comes, we have to go and dig them out of a dungeon of a pit. We've got to sit up all night praying for them. Why? Because they have no faith. They have no word in their soul. Some of these people. Why? Because they don't study the word. But you see, Jehoshaphat knew his God. So he, he feared because now he didn't know what to do. And the Bible said he said, proclaimed a fast. Some of us need to turn down our plates in 2022 and fast before God. You want answers? Stop going to these $2 prophets. Stop it. They're lying to you. They're not of God. They're sorcerer and witchcraft workers and palm readers and psychic and the ones that speak to the dead, uh, necrom necromancy or whatever. It's evil. It's of the devil. Your dead mama ain't speaking through them. It's a lie. Ooh, another lesson. And so he went on a fast to seek the Lord and all the people. He commanded all the people to gather and that they should seek the Lord. And they went to praying. I want you to hear this king's prayer. Because you see, when you know God and you know the word, you know how to pray. In the last lesson or one of the prayer lessons, watch all of them. I said, if you don't know God and you don't know the word, you don't know how to pray. If you don't know the word, you don't know what's afforded to you. And I talked about Psalm 103 when David said, listen, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. What are the benefits? Well, if you don't study the word, how will you know what the benefits are? And so Jehoshaphat knew what his benefits are. Listen to this man's prayer. Every time I read it, it moves my soul. He says, listen here. And so he set to seek and he took the lead and he said, O oh Lord God of our fathers, listen to this prayer. You've got to know God. He said, you, are you not the God? He says, God, let's start again. Oh Lord, God of our fathers. Are you not God in heaven? You see that? He got, he's getting up into God's face. He said, are you not the God of heaven? And do you not rule over all the kingdoms and the nation and your hand in your hand? Is there not power and might that no man is able to withstand you? In other words, no man on earth can defeat you. Aren't you the God of heaven? Aren't you the God of our fathers? That's how he started to pray. He says, are you not the God who drove out these same people and you gave us this land? Are you not the God of Abraham, your friend? Listen to this prayer. You could almost say he's cheeky. But no, he knew his rights. He knew what was afforded to him. He knew the word of God. He says, you're Abraham's friend forever. The Bible said God and Abraham's were friend. You heard the song, I am a friend of God. Abraham is a friend of God forever. And we are blessed because of Abraham. And he said, and they dwell in the land and they built you. This pointing finger at God. He said, they built you a sanctuary with your name on it. And you told them that if a disaster should come upon us, whether it's a sword, whether it's judgment, whether it's pestilence. I want you to listen, people. Listen, this is good. Whether it's famine. We went through pestilence of the pandemic. Listen, people. He said, you said they built the church, the sanctuary, the temple, a physical building. And God said, whenever you point your, if, if you get into trouble, meaning swords, somebody's coming to kill you, death all around you, judgment, somebody's trying to, you know, you got judgments, you got pestilence, famine. And if they would stand before the temple or in the direction of the temple, because why? His presence was there. His name was there. And if they cry out to him towards the temple, in the temple, in their affliction, God said, I will hear you and I will save you. 
We just came out of a pandemic. We have much better promises. We have a better covenant built on better promises. Because now we don't have to look towards the temple over yonder. The temple is in our heart. The, ba the Bible says our body is the temple of God. And if we would stop sinning in the temple, fornicating and whoremongering in the temple, we would experience God. And then, you know, it breaks your heart when people want God and, and, and they're like coming to you, leaning on you. Meanwhile, they've just, you know, they've done everything in the body, but praise God. Your body is the temple now. We don't have to look towards the temple, but he did. And guess what? He looked towards the temple and he said to God, you told us if we look towards the temple and cry out to you, you hear us and you help us, right? And so he prayed and he said, oh God, our God, will you not judge these people? They're coming for us. We have no power. So now when they join forces, because remember he was powerful, but when these other nations decide to join forces, then they outnumbered him. And he said, we have no power against this great multitude. He said, Lord, hear us. We don't know what to do. But our eyes, our eyes are on you. <clears throat> now watch this. <clears throat> Jehoshaphat was a good king. He was following the laws of God. And so while he was speaking, the Bible said, now listen, we just talked about John, about the spirit of God. And if anyone, <coughs> excuse me, is hunger and thirst, thir thirsty should come and drink. Here he says, and the spirit of the Lord <clears throat> came upon Jehaziel, right? The spirit of the Lord came upon. We are born again believers. The spirit of God is within us. They didn't have the spirit within. They had to wait for God to come, the spirit of God to come upon somebody to use them to talk. We are so blessed and fortunate. We have a better covenant based on better promises. The spirit indwells us. Read your Bible. He indwells us so we don't have to run to the priests or call the pastor ministers to pray. We can get down on our knees because he lives in us. But you see, we don't pay attention to him. And when, you know, the Bible said, you know, if you're a servant to sin, that's who you're serving. And a lot of people and churchgoers, they're serving sin. They're not serving God. He says, you can't have God and you're serving sin. You can't stay there. You see? And so the spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel. And he began to speak. The Lord spoke through him and says, do not be afraid and do not be dismayed. In other words, don't you get feel down and, 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 and get broken down because of these people. He said for the battle, the battle is not yours. The battle is not yours, but it's mine. Woo, Jesus, wouldn't you want God to tell you that when your boss comes against you with lies and people lie on you and family lie on you and tear you down? And don't you want to hear God says, little girl, that battle is not yours but it's mine and God gave them instruction you see it's not your fight sometimes there are some fights in your life that's not your fight you didn't start it it's not your fight Jehoshaphat didn't start this fight I'm excited he didn't start this fight they gathered against him. Why? Because God has blessed him. God expanded him. God stretched out his boundaries. They didn't like it. So they ganged upon him. You're feeling ganged upon? You're feeling like everybody's after you, tearing you down? Oh my goodness. That battle may not be yours, my friend. Not your fight. And so God told them, watch this now. You see, when you trust God, and you believe God, he'll tell you your enemy's business and the plot. He'll show you a way out. In Corinthians, my pastor used to make us say this all. She always remind us. She said, he'll make a way of escape free. God always made. He said, there's no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. But God will make a way of escape. So don't sit there and blame, oh, but I was tempted with sin. And you know, he came over and we were going to do Bible study and watch a movie. And then one thing led to another and we had sex. No, you knew he was coming over to have sex. So you took a shower, you put on your best lingerie and you knew the sex was coming. Stop it. 
you don't want to have sex, then don't open your door. Say, no, I'll see you in church tomorrow. Or you come over in the daytime and we watch the movie and when, it, when the street lights go off, you go home. Hmm? I didn't mean to lie. Yes, you did, because you had an opportunity to tell the truth. I didn't mean to steal. Yes, you did, because before you steal, the spirit checked you. And so God now reveals where the enemy was going to be. And he said, tomorrow go down against them for surely they're going to come up to the ascent of Ziz. So God now is speaking. He's get, getting the plan together. But just because God says it's not your fight and you don't have to fight means that you get to sit on the sidelines, right? And eat ice cream, lickety smack a do. No. You still got stuff to do. And that's where a lot of believers get it, miss it. Because they know oh, the battle is the Lord and they go off into the sunset and they forget God, forget the battle and they go on to do whatever. That's not so. He, God says to them, you won't need to fight now, but watch this. You need to stand still. He said, position yourselves. Watch this. God said, position yourself. That's where some of us lose the battle because we have the victory, but we fail to position ourselves. He says, position yourselves and stand still so you can see the salvation of your God who's with you. And he says, don't be feared and don't be dismayed. Tomorrow you're going to go out against them for the Lord is with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head and his face to the ground and all the inhabitants and they begin to worship the Lord. Watch this now. And so um, as they were uh, worshiping, Jehoshaphat then stood up and he says, hear me, children. This is the king speaking to the people. And he says, hear me, O Judah and all the inhabitants. He says, believe in the Lord, your God. So he encourages the people to believe God like I'm encouraging you to believe God. You see, it starts with believing. Go back to the first lesson on how to pray series. I talked about believing. And he said, believe the Lord your God and you shall be established. You'll be set up. You will have a routine. You'll be established. You'll be covered. And he said, believe the prophets and you will prosper. In other words, he says, believe. You have to be firmly persuaded. Remember the Bible said Abraham was what? Fully persuaded that what God said. God was going to do. Are you fully persuaded of God's word? Huh? No, because many of you, you want to pray, but you don't position yourself. Uh -huh. Watch this. And when he had finished speaking, he consulted with the people and he appointed those who should what? Listen, verse 21, those who should sing to the Lord and those who should praise, praise, praise the beauty of his holiness. And they went out before the army saying, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. That's where the church got praise is your weapon. He put the praisers out in the front. And how did they praise the Lord? He appointed some singers and then the praisers. And they went out before the army. So what did they do? God tell them, position yourself. And they position themselves. And many times we pray and we ask God for things. And we travail in prayer and we cry. But then we fail to position ourselves. What's the position? Praise. Uh, worship. Thanksgiving. Giving God the glory. Praising him for who he is. And so Jehoshaphat said he appointed those who would sing and those who would praise. So they would sing and praise. Remember Psalm 150? What did it say? Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. It says, praise him in the timbrel and dance. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbal. Praise him with the harp and the, and the, and the timbrel and the death. Praise him. And so he says, he put the singers and those who should praise him in the front. And what they were saying, they were saying, praise ye the Lord for he's good and his mercy endure it forever. That's why we praise God for he's good and his mercy endures forever. Watch what happened. They didn't fight in the battle. Watch. Now, this is verse 22. 
Now, when they began to sing and to praise, whoo we? When they began to sing and praise, you see why praise is important? God said to them, position yourselves. Now, what if they walked away and said, okay, God, it's your fight. See you later. We're going to go eat some hamburgers down at uh, Shake Shack or Shake Shack. We're going to Shake Shack. Thank you, Lord. It's your battle. Bye-bye. Mm -mm. God says, position yourselves. Stand still and see and see the salvation of your God. Many of us miss our blessing and miss our victories and, 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 and we blame God. No, that's because you walk away and you went to Shake Shack to have a burger and you didn't position yourself in prayer. You didn't fast. You didn't pray and you didn't wait to hear from him. Jehoshaphat prayed in verses 4 all the way through verses 11. And the Bible says, by verse 14, the spirit of the Lord came and spoke. God will speak back to you about your circumstances, but you don't wait to hear from him. You're not used to him speaking into your heart because you haven't spent time in the word. You haven't spent time in prayer. So when he's speaking, you're dull of hearing and you miss what he's saying to you because you're giving me a little laundry list. Bless Peter, bless Paul. Lord, I need a pair of shoes. Lord, I need a car. Lord, I need a house. Lord, I need a husband. Lord, I need a husband. Lord, I want to have sex. I want to have sex. I want to get married. And you miss hearing what God has to say because you're not listening. And so here, while he was praying, he get all the way to verse 14. And the Bible said, the spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel and spoke and gave them the answer and gave them the help that they needed. And so now when God says, position yourselves and the king listened. And so what? God says what? Position yourself and the king appointed singers and praisers and he instructed them. He said, you go out in front of the army because they are positioning themselves. And you say, position themselves for what? If the fight is not theirs and God's going to fight the battle, why should they be there? Stay tuned. And the Bible said, now when they began to sing and they began to praise, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir who had come against Judah. Let me cut it short for you. What God did was he set up the people and they came around the cliff and they're so ding ding, they started fighting each other and they begin to fight each other and they end up killing each other while God's people were up on the hill on the side of the cliff and the praisers were praising and they they were singing and saying for the Lord is good. Praise ye the Lord for the Lord is good and his mercy endure forever. And they were over there killing themselves because God let them turn on each other. Watch this. And so by the time Judah and the king came upon the sign and they look, it was all dead bodies dead bodies they fought and kill each other and they came upon by the time they got to where they were fighting all they saw was dead bodies and you say position yourselves position yourselves for what when they saw the dead body guess what god said oh look go pick up all their riches go pick up the bible calls it spoils ha <laughs> ha or booty you see the word booty came out of the Bible. I don't know. I don't even want to get into these people. But booty means riches, wealth, you know. And so they, when, when these people kill themselves, they came to fight the people of God. But they end up fighting each other. And then guess what? God then sends them and they picked up all the riches, all the wealth these people left behind. Because they fought and destroyed each other. And so now the children praising God, praising God and singing, when they come into the place, all they saw was the dead bodies of their enemies. And the Bible said they picked up all the wealth, all the riches, and they left. And in verse 27, it says, then they returned every man of Judah and Jerusalem with Jehoshaphat in front of them to go back to Jerusalem with joy for the Lord had made them rejoice over their enemy and God gave them rest all around, all around. The people gathered all the spoils, all the riches, all the gold, all the treasures. So they walked away from a fight that wasn't their fight. 
a battle that wasn't their battle. They walked away wealthier, not a scratch, none feeble, none got killed, none got hit by a stray bullet. They walked away in complete victory. On top of the victory, they walked away with riches and wealth and God gave them rest. In other words, God gave them peace that these people never came back to bother them. That's what praise will do for you. So don't ever think that you can pray and just walk away into the sunset and go off to the next thing. You have to position yourself after you pray to praise, right? So again, prayer is important. It's a dialogue. You saw how Jehoshaphat prayed? This is an example, and this is the Old Testament. I went there because I wanted you to understand and get some insight and hear the prayer of someone else. He prayed. He wasn't afraid to talk to God. He knew what God says. We have the word of God. And if God says with his stripes, you are healed and you're sick, you go to God and you said, but God, your word said, Jesus was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquity. God, the chastisement of my peace was upon him. And with his stripes, I'm healed. God, I need healing in my body. The doctor said so and so. Oh, father, you know what the word says. So you pray it to him. You cry out to him and when you're done aha uh -huh, you position yourself you begin to praise him you begin to thank him you begin to sing you begin to let what continual praise come out of your mouth don't stop praising him you say oh but i have symptoms yeah praise him anyhow your bank account is empty praise him anyhow your children acting crazy praise him anyhow your husband got up and left you praise him anyhow position yourself so in prayer praise is an integral part of prayer my time is long up this message was so excited i hope it blessed you share the message with someone else come back we are going to talk about worship next and again don't be alarmed i'm telling you just go through the lessons and you'll see so come back next friday we're going to talk about prayer and we're going to talk about worship i hope this lesson was a blessing to you again invite others to subscribe to the channel i thank you i appreciate you remember go with god and continue Continue to be a blessing because you are blessed to be a blessing. Thank you for watching.